I'm Eric Danner. Black Hill State got their first conference win in week five of Armac football action. The Yellow Jackets looking for their first Armac home victory against Adams State. At Black Hill State, they say fear the sting, but there was no sting from either offense in the first quarter. Second quarter, Ward Anderson going for the touchdown pass, broken up by Bobby Anzuris in the end zone, nearly picked off. The Jackets take advantage of new life. Anderson plunging in, Black Hills leads 7-0 after an Adam State touchdown. The Yellow Jackets defense swarming. They had four QB sacks on the afternoon. Boone Bowker gets Trevor Eggleston here. We're tied at seven at the break. Third quarter, Black Hills marching down the field on their first drive. Again, a short touchdown by Anderson makes it 14-7. Next drive for the Grizzlies, Eggleston sacked by Aaron Olson. He fumbles, ball recovered by Thad Stotler. Jackets cannot move the ball, settle for a 33-yard field goal by Devin Rounds at 17-7. Next possession for Adams on third and 29. Eggleston takes off, goes airborne, lands awkwardly. He would be taken to the hospital. Luckily, he checked out okay and would make the trip back with his team. Enter Cody Davies at quarterback. He gets the Grizz going, short pass to Jamar Brown to move the chains. That leads to a David Van Voris field goal, and it's a seven-point ball game heading into the fourth quarter after a missed field goal. Adam State goes to the ground. Michael Carl busts the longest play of the game, a 50-yard run. Carl is from Rush, Colorado, and that's exactly what he does, rush the football. That leads to another Van Voris field goal. Adam's now down 17-13, under four minutes to go. Trent Butler with the nice run, but he coughs up the football. Adam State recovers. Black Hills turn the ball over three times in the fourth quarter. Grizzlies cash this one in. It's Carl from nine yards out. Adam State leads for the first time in the game with just over a minute to go. The score's 20 to 17. Last chance for Black Hills Anderson. Picked off by Mario Moore. That would be the ball game. ASU wins a thriller 20 to 17. We talk about our kids, you know, just going out there and, and, and not quitting and, and, and fighting to the end. And we talk about being tougher for longer. And uh, that's what it took today. It was tough after you get, you know, we played two big games and we lost and, uh, you know, get back on track. We traveled this far and to get back on track with a win and, and coming back the way we did, that, that was a great job by our kids. I feel like we belong in this conference. I do. I know we can play in this conference, but, you know, give credit to Adams. They didn't give up. They battled back. They, they took advantage of some turnovers we had in the fourth quarter and, and came out victorious you know uh, we just got to shore up some things take care of the football and I, I know we can get some wins in this conference perhaps the armac game of the week or maybe even the game of the year being played in pueblo the now number two ranked csu pueblo thunderwolves taking on shadron state both teams three and oh in the rocky mountain athletic conference <laughs> A brisk afternoon at the Nita and Eddie DeRose Thunder Bowl, and it was Shadron State starting off red hot. John McLean hits Chapman Ham, who runs into the end zone. Eagles up seven zip. Shadron then recovers a fumble on the kickoff. Glenn Clinton with the short TD run. The Eagles shocking the second ranked T Wolves 14 0. Second quarter. Shadron continues moving the ball up and down the field. McLean to Ham again. Four yard score. CSC leads 21 3. Then the pack gets moving. Ross Dowson buys time, finds Paul Browning. Great snag in the end zone. Pueblo down 21-10. Next possession for CSUP. Dowson scoring from a yard out. Pack trailing 21-16 at the half. Third quarter, Shadron State gets rolling. Clinton, who had 205 yards rushing on the day, scores his second touchdown. Eagles lead 28-16. Thunderwolves respond. J.B. Matthews turning the corner and going 32 yards for the score. Pack trailing now 28-23 after Matthews leaves the game with an injury. True freshman Cameron McDonnell comes up big. 13-yard run for the end zone. We're tied at 31 heading into the fourth quarter. This is like a great heavyweight fight. Pueblo in the red zone. Dows it. Picked off by Connor Casey. Shadron takes advantage. Michael Madkins had just two carries on the day. How about this one? 47 yards, juking and jiving for a touchdown. Shadron retakes the lead, 38-31. Under two minutes to go. Pack at the one. Dowson makes it interesting, but he scores. We're tied at 38 and heading to overtime. Pueblo with the ball first. McDonald gets it all three times and scores from eight yards out. Shadron now has to score a touchdown. Last chance. McLean, his pass is incomplete. The only time CSU Pueblo leads the game, is in overtime. They win a classic 45-38. We were able to find a way to win it. 
at the end, it, it, it was just one heck of a football game. I don't know whether we did anything different or not, but maybe we played with a little sense of ur urgency when we had to, and uh, we, we were able to make the plays when we needed to. I think today definitely galvanized us as a team, and we really made huge strides in that. We knew we were going to take some shots today. Shadron's a great team, and uh, I think this is a springboard for us emotionally and uh, as a team moving forward. The following week, 6-0 CSU Pueblo at 4-2 Colorado Mines, and this looks familiar. The Ore Diggers score first. Matt Brown to Cody Rankin from five yards out. Mines up 7-0. Still first quarter, Dowson running, takes a big hit. He fumbles, recovered by Ryan Wood. Or diggers cash in. Brown to Doucette. Colorado Mines leads 14-0. The Pack fall two touchdowns behind for the second week in a row. Second quarter, Pueblo gets on the board. Dowson to Browning. Nine-yard score. It's 14-7. Then, just like in the Shadron game, Mines gets a big play. Brown to Rankin on the crossing route. And look at the moves by Rankin. Leaving players in the dust. The 160-pounder goes 81 yards for the touchdown. Mines leads 21-10 at the half. Third quarter, CSUP gets some big plays. Dowson to Marcel Williamson. That is good for 60 yards, and it would set up McDonald. Pack now down 21-17 after a couple of three and outs by Mines. Dowson to Roger Fannenschmidt, 34-yard touchdown. Pueblo leads for the first time on the day with five minutes to go in the third quarter. It's 28-21. The Thunderwolves would score in all four of their possessions in the third quarter. Dowson, his third touchdown pass of the game, and it's Williamson who had three catches for 119 yards and this big TD. CSU Pueblo wins 35-21. We just had a great push from the line up front, and I knew I was going to have to go out there and get those tough yards, so I just went out there and tried to run as hard as I could behind him.